Hey, I was once again on an extended weekend photography trip uh, uh, and it was simply awesome. I took some 12-13 rolls of film, I got some pictures that I really like. Uh, but before we get in there, let's get on an island. This was the boat ride. So once again we had a photo trip with my buddy double Kari Paukola, a good friend of mine. Uh, we went to yet another lighthouse island between Finland and Sweden. Now this one was called Isokari. It's a fairly large island actually. It's about two, three kilometers uh, lengthwise and the width is about maybe one kilometer. Um, you know, after the first day, Kari said that we had taken 25,000 steps. You know, on those slippery cliffs, that's, that's a pretty nice achievement. But there were only a few other persons on that island, so we practically had the whole island to ourselves, which was, which was nice. Uh, let me show you a few midday pictures that we took, you know, in the middle of the day. So midday, uh, I mean midday is not ideal for photography, at least I am still looking for um, a good way to shoot landscape in the middle of the day. It's challenging, you know, I like to shoot directly at the sunlight and try to get the summer uh, feeling and I maybe I manage in some of those, but all in all it's challenging. But I mean, we are on this island, you can't just eat and sleep the whole day through, you gotta have something to do in the middle of the day too, so we... We took some pictures. Um, Gear-wise, I, I mean, I know that less is more, and I should have taken maybe just my Rolleiflex with me, just one single camera. But I, I contacted Kari beforehand, and I asked his suggestion: What should I bring with me? And he said, like, we are on this island a couple of days. Why don't you take all you can carry, and maybe dedicate Sunday to Rolleiflex and Monday to something else, and then. Tuesday for yeah, third camera, so take anything you, you can carry, which I did. Um, so I had a heavy load. I of course had my Rolleiflex with me. I mean that seems to go with me all the time. And then I had my Hasselblad bag full of stuff. So I had my... I had my 500cm uh, with my 100mm uh, 3.5f uh, planner, which is sort of the normal lens for me. I don't have the 80mm uh, lens at all. Uh, this is pretty brutal and honest lens, so I had that. Then I also got my 50mm, uh, where did I put it? 50mm Distagon which is really nice for landscapes and, and everything that, you know, you need a little bit more space. So these, but then of course I also had my super wide. Now, this is a little bit of an overlapping combination, but I mean, since I took the back, you know, whatever. Um, 
then I also I had an ND filter with me, an ND filter uh, 1000, which means that um, I could slow down the day 10 stops, so I could reduce like 10 stops. So that's that that was neat. Also, I had my Liro pinhole camera. Uh, which weight-wise doesn't weigh anything, it's made of wood and, and so on. Hey, I got all of this stuff with me, so far too many. Uh, also, I think I had Holga with me, but I don't think I took any Holga pictures, so that was redundant. Mm. Hey, uh, so I'm not a morning person by any means, but Kari seems to be, so he woke me up before 5 o'clock, before sunrise and we got on the beach and it was like this. So film-wise, mm, let's put this away. Film-wise, I of course shot mostly with FP4, Ill4 FP4. I've said that earlier before that this is my favorite film currently. I like this a lot. Then I took some color pictures with Portra 160. I also think I shot one roll of Ektar. I it was by accident. I didn't notice I had Ektar on me too. Uh, I develop both color and black and white film at home. I mean, color film is really not more difficult to develop at home. And, and so it takes time, but you know, it's a lot of fun actually. Uh, for the sheet film, for my Leroy, I of course had a bunch of, of uh, these cartridges. I mean, this is just a, a few. I had probably like, I don't know, 12? 16 of these and then I had two types of film from up on 100 for black and white and then I have a big uh, You know the freezer full of uh, Fuji, Fuji Pro Via expired uh, Color positive film that I It has this magenta tilt, but I've uh, started to develop this in C41 which is the uh, it's called cross development. So you, even though it's a color positive film, I develop it in color negative liquids, and I get results with this combination. You know the results that I currently like. So these were my films. Um, in the evening, it was still really warm. It was close to 30 degrees centigrade. I mean that's like 85, 86 Fahrenheit. Um, so, and very calm seas, so it was really awesome during the evenings to, you know, carry all this load and go around the cliffs and, and shoot some seascapes. It looked like this.
Hey, and now uh, we are on a lighthouse island, so we gotta photograph the lighthouse itself too. Uh, it was built in 1833 and it's of course fully automated now. You can get inside of the lighthouse and, and climb up the stairs about 200 steps I guess. Um, now the thing is that if you go inside you better close the door behind you if, because if you don't for some reason swallows that fly around the island they fly into the lighthouse and they get trapped they don't find their way out. There were some dead swallows there so it's a kind of a bird trap which is you know kind of a sad thingy but so we closed the door and got up there you know the lighthouse looks like this So it was really sunny and warm and calm. Now the last day, the day that we were planning to head out, it started to rain and drizzle a bit. Uh, I don't mind, I actually like uh, that kind of a weather for photographs. So we still took some, some sort of more rainy pictures and cloudy pictures and before heading out. Now as we were approaching the mainland then uh, I took one more picture of this eyesore, this uh, fertilizer factory that has been built in the early 70s on the coast of Finland. I don't think they would allow those kind of buildings anymore but I thought it looks uh, really fantastic from the sea. It has, I mean uh, it's kind of an awful thing to look at, but you know, there's something, something about it from the photography point of view. The picture looks like this. So then back home I had a major um, undertaking, you know, developing all these pictures and I've been going through them now. and. I will print a few of them because uh, some of them I really like um, and then that's part of the enjoyment of film photography. I mean there's a lot of manual work even after the trip and I enjoy each and every step of that and, and it sort of allows me to relive those moments again. It's like a closest thing to a time machine, I know. <laughs> Uh, so thanks again, Kari, uh, for organizing this trip, as you always do. I mean, with this uh, frequency, I think we're gonna run out of lighthouses pretty soon, but... <laughs> it was a good trip. See you later. <laughs>